Saquon sat with me, could not love him more, could not love how thoughtful and introspective he is, and I wish him all the best in the future. And of course, I started with the tough question. Saquon, Saquon, Saquon. And let's get to the really tough questions off the bat here. Uh, the question everybody wants to know when it comes to Saquon Barkley, what do you have against Monsters, Inc.? Wow. Um, I have nothing against Monster Inc. I just think the four movies that were presented, I just feel like it's easy. Lion King is a freaking is classic. Oh. Cars is like like Cars is like one of my movies. Like I love I love Cars. I forgot what the third one was again. It was Nemo. Nemo was the third one. Like, come on. Like Nemo, you're not picking Monster Inc. over Nemo. Like Nemo brings tears to people. Monster Inc. is definitely it's not a bad movie. It's just sometimes in life, you know, it was put up against three other really good movies and you got to go with the three that you feel. Um, let's talk about your season. 10 total touchdowns, over 1,200 scrimmage yards, even with three different quarterbacks. That's amazing. This O-line that was banged up, not itself, missing a few games. You missed games, and these were, the, these were your numbers. What was the high point of the season for you? Well, one, thank you. Uh, you may it seem like I still had a good season. I know some people yeah. uh, will, will disagree, but uh, I like to look at it that way. I like to make that the narrative, how, how you made it. Um, high point of the season, um, I would say probably the last game. Um, it was a little mix of both because you, you knew that was the last game and uh, obviously the season to go the way we would like it to go. But to, to finish off on a high note, um, really not playing for anything, knowing we're out the playoffs, uh, just how all the guys came to work that week, how we practiced, um, how we went out in the game, competed, uh, finally get to beat Philly, a team that you know, we struggled uh, with in, in, in recent years. So uh, it was a little bit, little bit of both, but it, none but, nothing but tremendous respect for all my teammates because it's easy. And I've been part of games like that before, weeks like that before. And, and you, you can see how those guys really showed up, how we all showed up in practice, how the coaches came um, and still pushed us. And then we were able to get a win. So uh, that's the beauty of the NFL. I'm surprised that anybody would say that you didn't have a great season. You won a game with Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, and Tommy DeVito. I would argue the common denominator is you. You you are the focal point, the center of that offense, of any offense that you would ever play in. How confident are you going into what is might be a very businessy offseason for you? I am really confident because I'm at ease. Um I only can control the things that I can control. Uh, I have an unbelievable team around me, um, and I know that they're going to get the job done. Uh, last year, it was a little stressful, especially after you get tagged. Um, and then, like, it's, I don't like really talking about myself too much, so I definitely don't like turning on the TV and try to watch ESPN or watch any of these, you know, these, these TV shows and, oh, here goes my face, and it's, oh, what's the contract negotiation? All that stuff kind of bothered me. But now, like, when you, it's kind of like I dealt with it last year. Um, I went through it last year. So I'm at ease. So that's why I'm confident. It's like whatever happens, happens. Um, I'm listening to my team, listening to my doc. I took my six weeks off. I ain't touching no weights, uh, which anyone who knows me is kind of hard to do. Um, so after Super Bowl, I'm going to get back ready. And I know I have a lot left in the tank. And whether it's with the New York Football Giants or not, um, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to compete at a high level. Can you, pick, can you picture life outside of that locker room? I don't know. Uh yeah. Jim, go ahead. Definitely, it definitely would be, it would be weird. Um, it would be weird, but it depends how you look at it. Uh, I came in with Penn State. I think I am the only one of my teammates from Penn State. I think, I think Abinda, I think Abinda still with Detroit the whole time. Uh, that's been with the team for six, for six years. Every other, all my guys, like some of my best friends, like uh, I see them pick up and move and go to this spot or play for a different team and, you know, if they're, they're able to handle that adversity, uh, you know, I, I think I, I think I'll be OK. Uh, you know, a source close to Jim Harbaugh mentioned that you'd be at the top of his his list if it if you were available. You and Eckler in the backfield sounds kind of nice. Uh, yeah, um, I got nothing. LA? But to, you could be closer to me. <laughs> I got nothing but respect for uh, Coach Harbaugh. Uh, obviously, the success he had in the NFL before playing against him uh, in college. Uh, and I'm a big fan of Justin Herbert, too. I think he's one of the, one of the best quarterbacks in, quarterbacks in NFL. But, hey, if, you know, the opportunity uh, was able to present itself, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't be against it. Um, but, like I said, only can control what I can control. Um, and right now it's chilling, relaxing, um, and watch the Super Bowl just like everybody else.
I love that. So Daniel Jones came on my show every week this year, and he had nothing but praise for you as a man, as a leader, as uh, like I sort of said, the focal point that comes from Daniel Jones. What would you like to say about him and how he's dealt with this season? Uh, obviously, the season didn't go the way any of us would like it. And, you know, the, the injury and then getting hurt early in the year and then coming back and hurting his knee and, and ACL and going through that road before, I, I know how tough it's going to be. Um, I, I know, you know, the adversity that he's going through. Um, but also, I know who Dan Jones is, too. Um, I know the, the work ethic. I know the character he has. I know the mindset that he has. And that's just going to be nothing for him. Um, he's going to be back stronger than ever. Uh, if anything, I, you tend to realize that that injury makes you a lot better in a lot of different ways, not just only on a football field, but just as a man um, in the locker room, um, in the weight room, uh, get, getting the game taken away from you. So really understand how much you actually miss the game. So I'm ready for him. I'm ready. I'm ready to see uh, the level that he's going to take it to um, because of the work ethic that he's had, the mindset. He, he, he's really – you ask anybody in the locker room, Everyone can say what they want to say about Darren Jones and have their opinions about Darren Jones, but we're there every single day. And you don't hear nothing negative from anybody in the locker room, uh, whether that's players, whether that's trainers, whether that's coaches, whether that's you know anybody, you know, the chefs, anybody. No one can say anything negative about him um, because they know uh, the work that he puts in. And you know, I believe if you have that mindset and that work, I think all good things can come your way eventually. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to young players who are dealing with adversity, whether it's like something doesn't go right, or I'm talking about interviews that I'll do with players, uh, injuries, and I bring you up in this conversation you and I had after your injury, and you had the time out because you had the most refreshing, optimistic take that I, it's the best perspective that like it happened for a reason that it was the best year of your life because you had to deal with all of the adversity and it made you a better man, a better player. I always tell, I always tell people that, that there's um, goodness in it from one of the best players to do it. And I always, I've always remembered all the interviews. I always remember that moment with you. Cause I was like, shoot, like that's a good way to think about things. Um, that Thank said, you. you tell this nice thing about Daniel Jones. You're somehow walking around with, I heard Tommy DeVito. I love Tommy. Tommy is, it's like, I always be like, I, always, I talk like he's like this young rookie. He's like 25. Like he's literally a year or two, a year or two younger than me. So it's like, I, I talk, I talk about him like he's my little brother. And, but he really is. He, he, he's, he's, I was so happy. Was, it was fun to be a part of uh, yeah. that whole, you know, that, that, that whole chaos that was brought to the city. It, it brought, you know, just a great vibe, even in the games and the, all this. And it made, it made it fun, especially when the season wasn't going the way that, uh, we wanted it to go. Um, he, he brought he brought the spark and he brought the life, and he showed that he could he could play at a high level. He showed that he could play in the NFL. So is he a starting quarterback? Part. I believe so. I think um, I think with the right opportunity, uh, with the right chance, I think he showed. It's hard to win in this league. It's hard to win football games in this league. Um, and we had a lot of challenges this year, a lot of adversity, a lot of people banged up, a lot of injuries. Uh, but the roster probably wasn't the way uh, we, we saw. It, uh, being in the beginning of the season and he came in and he brought the spark and was able to win games. So uh, you got to give him, you got to give him his credit with credit to do. I love that. Okay. We know that you are chilling, but you're not just watching the Super Bowl like everybody else. You are in the P and G battle of the paddles. This thing gets so competitive, Saquon. It's crazy. I'll be there. I'm hosting the thing. Tell me what you're excited about, uh, what the event is all about. And I know you're going up against like Trevor Lawrence and Jamal Williams. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, first I'll be representing Gillette. Um, and Gillette's all about building confidence. Gillette's all about looking good, feeling good. Right now, I, I'm not there. That's why I have this hat on. But before the tournament, I'm going to visit Gillette Labs. I'm going to get a fresh shave, clean shave, uh, so I can go out there and perform at a high level. Um, and I'm excited. I love competing. Uh, I started playing table tennis probably three or four years ago. Um, I was really, really bad, really bad. Uh, probably one of the worst in the locker room. And I kind of made it a point that would be really good. So I got up to at least like the top three, top four uh, players on the team. Um, David Sills, who was a giant before, and Matt Barkley, who was on the team this year, uh, are probably the two best that I've seen. Darius Slayton's the best one right now. I I'll get him a couple of times, but he's weird. He's a lefty. Um, so he definitely is it's hard to play against him. But I'm looking forward to competing. Uh, I know uh, Trent Taylor won it last year, so there's a duos part of it. So hopefully I get him on my team so I can get an easy victory there uh, with a title. 
um, and also learn a little more about him as my teammate. So if I am if I am able to make it finals and he's the guy, um, I'll know him like a book. I love that. That's all happening Wednesday the 7th. It's at 8 p.m. Everybody can check it out on Overtime Season's YouTube page live. There's going to be a lot of fun. Saquon's never wanted to talk much, but maybe we'll get you talking. We'll get you talking a little bit. Jamal, yeah, I'm a, you never know what to expect out of him. Exactly. I'm having a little fun. I'm having a little fun. Uh, there's some guys there. Like you said, Jamal, uh, Swift's going to be there. Uh, Will's going to be there. I know those I know those two personally. So uh, definitely try getting ahead. A little smack talk, talk a little, talk a little trash in the head, even they're a little better than me. If you, if you can play some mental games with these guys, uh, see, see if they fall. I love that. And, you know, these table tennis tables are in every locker room across the NFL. So whether it's with the Giants or any of the other 31, they would be lucky to have you, Saquon. Rooting for you, of course. Thank you so much, always. 